Hello everybody! In the previous video about the Kai Professional MPC series as well as the Force, I promised you another video there where, in which I would show you how you can use the pads as well to play uh, Bitwig sounds and also use your MPC and your Force as an external synthesizer. And yeah, that's what we're gonna do now. One other thing first is I also got the tip that you could use your MPC as well as a, a MIDI as a pure MIDI controller which is also possible so there you can configure everything all the buttons and knobs but then you lose the ability to use it as a standalone device as well so if you prefer that you can use for example my generic flexi extension which allows you to basically map any function in Bitwig to any controller. So you could then define your knobs, buttons, whatever you want, if you prefer that. But then you cannot use the sounds in the MPC with Bitwig. So, but that's also maybe an option which could come in handy for you. Another tip is if you want to quickly switch between your main MPC view, which we need much more now in this tutorial, and the control mode, there is also the option to to do that quickly not by looking up that here in the touch display but just pressing here the pad so the 16 different functions or screens here can also be addressed with the pad so you simply can press here the third pad and you can quickly go here to the control mode which is necessary now in this tutorial you can go back to main and if you want to go back to the control mode you just press menu and the third pad at the same time. So it's not that problematic to switch between the views, which we will do now quite often in this tutorial. How can you control now and use finally the pads? As we saw in the previous video, you can only use the pads in control mode for launching clips or recording clips and same for scenes. So now to play that, we need to go in our normal main mode of the MPC or also on the, on the force. And here we can simply use a MIDI channel. So let's go for the first track, select this as a MIDI channel by clicking here on this MIDI interface symbol. And we can rename the track. For example, let's call that here Bitwig control so this will be our control channel to address bitwig and what we also need to do is here to set here the midi program which we have below that the midi port output we need to set that to remote so this will then come into bitwig on the midi port so you can look that up here in your settings so this is the second input you chose here in the settings so this midi input which is also available then here on the input side here in your all ins here as the input this will be now the one we selected here so let's play that already and you see it's already working that we can play here the sounds in Bitwig by doing so. Okay, so you can play here now the pads in chromatic, not in a chromatic way, in a way you can define here in the pad performance. And the pad performance can also be opened by using shift and using the 16 level button here up, up here, if you prefer that to use buttons. And you see now here what the notes are on your pad, which you can play. And you can also change here the octave. So transpose it up and down. You can also change the scales, which you want to use. For example, we could go to minor, which I prefer, always sad songs. And you have some other options like also playing chords here and uh, also chord progressions. So you see here the different chord names here in the display as well. And yeah, lots of possibilities how you can configure the pads. I guess if you are familiar with that if you are an MPC user. And this can also be uh, used with Bitwig. And if you want to play some drums, for example, uh, let's switch here to my drum channel, which I prepared and uh, back again. You see no drums playing. You need to go here and transpose it one down. So for that, it makes more sense to have it chromatic. So we can also play, play the snare. Okay, so 
we have it now going. Let's start with some drums and uh, you can quickly go back like this here and you can say with the record button, I want to record here that clip. Uh, this creates a new clip, which makes it easier because we need to switch again here from left to right. And so it's easier to just create a fixed clip and not have it recorded on the fly. So let's enable nevertheless here a metronome. So we have an idea about the tempo. Tempo is 120, this is fine. Create uh, this clip here. So we also hear the click. Go back to main. So we have a basic beat going, we can go back here now again to here. We can say we want to turn off here the click and we also want to quantize what we did. And we already got the beat going. Let's select uh, now the, the second sound we have here in Bitwig. Also, let's play something here. First to show what you can do here. So we have it playing here at, at, at full level and you can also have half level if you use it with shift and you can switch it off as well. So let's go with full level. And now let's also record something here. Let's get rid of this clip, create a new one and back to main. Yeah, very sloppy and let's go back here to quantization. Oh, and it's perfect. <laughs> okay, so we had the full ring. You can also use a note repeat, but for note repeat, you would need to have a sync. And I will talk about synchronization also in a separate video when we have a look at the force, because I think this will already get already pretty long, this video. But nevertheless, you can use note repeat as well. You can also latch it that you don't have to keep it pressed like this and this is also working and as I said we will look into synchronization in a separate video. Yeah there was also the question about uh, is 16 level working? Yes 16 level is also working but to make that work you need to turn off the pads here and then you can go back to here put that on and then you need to choose the notes you want to use for example that one and then you have the 16 different velocities up to the maximum. So this can also be used here now for recording, but let's turn that on again to notes. So back to C minor. So how can you use now the MPC as a multi temporal synthesizer? I have already here my Bitwig template. I had here the MPC on a track. And as you see, I have inserted a hardware instrument device and what you need to select, you need to select as the output, the Akai network MIDI driver. So it will be sent to your MPC and you can also configure your audio input. So I connected that one via the audio output to my sound card and configured the sound card in Bitwig and named it as MPC. So that one is selected as well here. We need first to create the track. So let's go here to a second track. Let's say we want here, whatever, a plug-in. Let's say the tubes in. Let's go with that for an example. You, you can hear that already. You see the audio is coming in here. It's now triggered here locally from the track. But what we want to do is to also trigger it from our trigger track, the Bitwig control. So we can also record it here and play it back. And as you see, it's going crazy now because you get a MIDI feedback loop. So what you need to do is disable the channel coming from Bitwig or otherwise it will be sent straight away to Bitwig and this one will go crazy. So here we have, you need to select that one here so that you see this input configuration. You need to go to the input ports and say here, 
I want to have either no input at all or what we can have a look at. I have here my Korg M3 connected as well. Uh, so to the first MIDI input. So let's select that one as an input. And now we can play here again and also we can i can play from my keyboard here so you can have your keyboard connected to still to the archive itself if you want to jam offline and if you are connected to your door you can still use your keyboard with that as well if you configure it like this so let's go back to maybe to the track view so we can see what's actually happening so we have on the first we have our control channel and on the second we have now our first plug-in channel and it's configured to be auto we need to change that to in so it's always sounding when we are playing also here via bitwig the sound so we can play now uh, that second track here our plug-in from the first one either from the pads or also from the keyboard which is working nicely so let's record uh, something with now with our sound here so let's go back to here let's create also a clip back to here You can also crank up the volume a bit here. So and that's how we used our first channel, but uh, the device is much more powerful than only one. So how do we approach a second channel? You simply need to duplicate here your channel and assign different MIDI channels. So that one was already assigned to one. So let's assign the second one to number two. And let's get rid of that one. And on the second one we have now, so we are here now. Let's go back to the main menu and create a second track we want to have here. Let's create a new plugin and let's go for example, well, why not use a Mellotron sound here which is new. And let's go with a, a choir pad, why not? Also here set the input here to uh, in and we see that here so we have now two tracks and the first one we already heard and the second one is now also configured correctly but we should set it to MIDI channel 2 and we also need to set the MIDI channel to 2. Well, let's record that as well. Let's go here to our clip view. Let's create a new clip for that. And so we have the second channel. Uh, what you might notice if we have the playback running, we have uh, coming audio from both. So on the second one, we should either turn down the volume or just uh, select that we have no input with that. Otherwise, we will have a duplicated audio signal twice. What makes totally sense is that you, because it's quite some work to configure that, as you might have noticed, to set it up once and then simply save that as a template, both on the MPC Live as well as in Bitwig. And then you can directly start and have some fun with jamming around. And as I said, I will also look into the force. Also on the force, we have a sequencer which we can integrate. And we will do that in a separate video because this already got quite long. So until then, make some funky music.